Hello and welcome to Old Ways Gardening and Prepping. My name is Teresa. I'd like to welcome you this evening out to the shed of many names. Now if you hear pinging noise, it's rain falling down from the trees onto the shed. Finally getting to make this video. It was a good rain that come through and we've been needing it. Now, I am paid to cook for family members so I was sent to the grocery store yesterday and I found some amazing deals on clearance and on sale as well so I figured I'd bring y'all along because somebody might enjoy this recipe and it's going to be stuffed portobello mushrooms oh yes I love making stuffed mushrooms I was blessed yesterday to get five of these double packs of portobello mushrooms for 99 cents y'all regularly 4.99 a pack and they're organic so i figured i knew what was going to be made so you're going to need uh portobello mushrooms i've already took the stems out and of course i'll have the recipe in the description box below I also caught Italian sausage on extremely good sale, not clearance, but on sale. You know, it's something when you get name brand cheaper than you can generic. So, got that. Now, I found this. I just happened to be walking around down that aisle. It's called Four Sisters and a Rice Farm in Louisiana. It's American grown rice by women. And it comes from Louisiana. It's organic white rice, extra long grain. And I'm like going, it was on sale as well. And I'm like going, we're going to try this because I try to support American farmers as much as possible. And it don't matter what color they are. I, if you're an American farmer, I will support you as long as you're growing correctly. I'm going to use some dehydrated bell peppers course white pepper and pink salt and of course I sneak vegetables in because there's some one vegetable hater and well I sneak them in I've got some dehydrated spinach I'm gonna use one can of red gold diced and crushed tomatoes that I caught on the clearance a while back I've got some garlic powder some oregano and the last little bit of my parsley and of course gotta have butter and I'm using unsalted butter because I know the sausage has salt I know the diced tomatoes will have salt in it as well and an onion so let's get the camera adjusted and let's get busy because I want to cook the rice first it's going to be a version of Spanish rice and I want to get it cooked and cooled down some so I can mix it with the sausage and oh yeah cheese there's gonna be cheese involved all right i'll see you back here in just a bit okay this way you can see what i'm doing let's move the lid first and i'm gonna measure out my dry ingredients first i'm looking forward to seeing this rice i'm happy to see oh it smells good it smells so good now, I'm going to be using two cups of rice. That means I'm going to need four cups of liquid here in a bit. Always happy to support farmers here in America. Okay, now I do not waste my stems. I'm gonna chop them up. Of course, I'll cook with the rice and get good and soft. And of course, you wanna make sure that your workspace is clean and sanitized. I 
I never waste the stems of mushrooms as long as they look good. They're going in the pot too. Just waste not, want not. And those portobello mushrooms that I caught on clearance, not a thing went wrong with them at all. That package, one package of just two portobello mushrooms are regularly $4.99 a pack now. And I got them for 99 cents. I was so happy. Usually I saute my onions first. This time I'm just going to throw them in. And always save your onion peels and everything. Put them in bags. Freeze them up if you want to. And they can be added, oops, they can be added into stock later on. So don't waste anything if possible. Tough little onion. Oh, and it's a rough little onion, too. It's been in storage for a while. You want one medium to large, and this is a white onion. You can use red onions. You can use yellow onions. I use Vidalia onions to eat. What I'm doing is building flavor in this pot. Uh oh, no escapees. And this is dehydrated bell peppers. It's a mixture of all colors. And I'm going to do just a little more. A good size handful. half a teaspoon of white pepper oh it smells so good already I want a teaspoon of pink Himalayan salt like our garlic around here so I'm gonna do a heaping teaspoon of garlic powder and a tablespoon of dried Oregano. Oh, smells good. This isn't enough parsley, but I'd say about a tablespoon of parsley, but that's all the parsley I have. So use what you got. And this is the dehydrated spinach. Oh, it smells so good. And I'm going to use about a quarter cup. Just a tad bit more. <laughs> oh, let me tell you, that smells good. 
and this is unsalted butter. You can use ghee or you can leave it out. But it's rice. I want some butter with my rice. One, two, and three tablespoons. As you know, it's butter. Butter makes everything better. All right, now it's time to mix the wet ingredients, and I'm going to need four cups of liquid. Now, I'm a little sneakier, and since I'm using a can of diced and crushed tomatoes, of the liquid out of there. There's still more in there. more cups for every oops for every cup of rice you use you use two cups of liquid and I wanted to make sure so aunt's still happy I want to make sure that I get my well, add just a little bit more because I know it's built some and there's dry ingredients in here This is just building up flavors. Now, if you wanted to, you can make plain rice. You can leave the butter out, use olive oil, and you can leave the meat out if you wanted to to make this a uh, vegetarian dinner. Alright, I'm going to put. Yep, that's right lids behind me put the lid on i'm fixing to put it on the stove and get the meat cooking as well and i'll bring you right back to show you uh oh i always forget don't try to push the pause button when your fingers wet because the camera will not work And I'm going to cook the meat till it's completely done, and I'm going to drain it really good. And I'm going to bring the rice up to a boil, and then once it starts boiling, I'm going to drop that heat, the flame down really low on it, and I'm going to let it, the rice cook till the rice is done, and then I'll bring you back. Okay, the rice is done. The meat is completely cooked. And I, thankfully, it wasn't a whole lot of grease in the Italian sausage, but I still drained it anyway. And now I'm just going to add rice in. And don't worry, your rice is not going to be real flaky. It's going to be moist. And that's what you want.
all together really well. And you're going to continue to mix it. Oops, sorry. You're going to continue to mix it until everything's combined really well. Now, there's a good chance you're going to have extra stuffing left. That's perfectly fine because you can still, you can freeze it or you can put it in your fridge and have it for the next day dinner. I, I'll bring you back because what I'm going to do is mix this real good, make sure everything's combined and I want it to cool down quite a bit before I try to add all the cheese to it. And I'll bring you back once it's cooled down and I can add the cheese. See you at the wall. Okay, the mixture has been mixed really good. Made sure that the meat was mixed all in. It has cooled down. It's a slight bit warm, but nothing like it was. Now, here comes the fun part. Because you know, cheese always makes everything better. Now, if you don't, if you can't use cheese, leave cheese out. Stuff your mushrooms. This time, the cheese choice is up to you. Now, I'm using a mixture of mild cheddar and mozzarella because I need to get it used up. If you want it a little more spicy, you can do pepper jack. You can do Kobe jack. You can use a Mexican style mix. You can use whatever you want. And apparently a branch just fell down out of the tree. And I'm going to use a big handful of it. Because it's also a binder as well. And I'm going to use some mozzarella. You can use plain mozz, just all mozzarella, all cheddar. And of course it don't want to open. It will now. And of course I'm going to top the mushrooms with Parmesan. If you wanted to mix all Parmesan, you can use smoked Gouda. Shredded smoked Gouda. If the cheese is whatever cheese that you and your, either you or you and your family enjoy. And you want to get it mixed in real well. Said, if you want to make it vegetarian, you can leave out the cheese completely. We just tend to like our cheese. That was two, well, one big handful of each kind. No, I'm going to add Parmesan on top. That's going to be plenty of cheese. And of course, it's going to melt while it's baking in the oven. I'm going to pause it now so I can get the baking dish ready and show you what we're going to do. Once I can get the finger to work. Okay, I have my baking pan. I have two ready to go because I know all these mushrooms are not going to fit in that one. And then I have sprayed it with olive oil. And you're going to, and of course, I've cleaned the mushrooms up, made sure that they were ready to go. And you're just going to take the filling, get it all in there real good. You want to make sure you have enough in there. See how beautiful that is? Look at that. 
and put it in your baking pan. And I'll put the the Parmesan on at, when I get them all filled. And I also want to say I have my or have the oven preheating at 350 degrees. And I'll tell you now, these make wonderful leftovers. You might have to encourage them to get into the dish. You want to make sure you get a good amount. No, I don't measure how much goes in each mushroom. I just pack the mushrooms real well. Some might get a little more. Some might get a little less. You know what? You're still, you're still going to be able to eat them. Some of the mushrooms are a little smaller than the other ones. Some have deeper cavities, some have thinner. You just work with what you have. So I'm telling you now, these mushrooms are an absolute blessing to have. Now, while I still have an opening. Where's my spiral? Okay. I have some good chicken broth here. Now you can use vegetable broth. You can use beef broth. Whatever broth you want. You could use water, but it's going to be really bland. And I'm going to pour about a cup and a half in. Do just a tad bit more. There you go. And that's going to help make a juice, help steam the mushrooms. And this makes it just absolutely delicious. And basically, what you're going for. Is to make sure that the mushrooms get cooked because your filling is completely fully cooked. You don't have to worry about your filling cooking. And I have not used any eggs, so you don't have to worry about that. Squeeze that little baby in there. It's going to take a little while for your mushrooms to cook thoroughly. And that will give plenty of time for the cheese and the stuffing to melt. And the cheese on top to melt and get a pretty color. Alright, let's get the Parmesan. Some just want to fall in your in your broth. That's perfectly fine. You just want to get a good amount on the top. Because, like I said, cheese makes everything better. Well, most of everything better. And the Parmesan just gives it a an extra little zing. I absolutely love Parmesan cheese. And 
I've been needing to use this cheese up for a while, so I have a perfect reason to. I'm gonna stuff these and once I get this second uh, tray of mushrooms stuffed or casserole dish stuffed I'm gonna put them in my in the oven at 350 and I'll let you know how long these took to cook because it depends on your oven also depends on the mushrooms but it's about 30 minutes 45 minutes and they should be done and I will bring you back when I'm taking them out of the oven. See you at the wall. Okay, they have baked for uh, about 30 minutes. They've got a nice, good golden brown on them. You want to make sure your cheese is melted. And you put a knife in your mushrooms. And they're real tender. Alright, it's time to bring these out. And I will show you how good they look. See you back here in a bit. Okay, they are done and turned out beautiful as always. I have paired it with a mixed salad with a little Parmesan cheese and some garden herb vinaigrette on top. Now you don't need a fork. I mean, you do need a fork. You don't need a knife to cut it. But I wanna show you what the inside looks like first. Soft, just like it's supposed to be. And I know it's gonna be hot, so I'm gonna have to be careful. Mushroom completely cooked look at that beautiful look how beautiful that is inside hot and steaming mushroom completely cooked filling hot cheese melted and a golden brown just like it's supposed to be Oh my god. Mm. Absolutely. Excuse me. Absolutely delicious. Very healthy for you. I hope you've enjoyed this video. And that it encourages you to also make your own homemade stuffed portobello mushrooms. Now, of course, you can change the stuffing around. Add what ingredients you have or what ingredients you enjoy. But simple, easy. Look for those sales, people. You can do it. We kind of, well, this really wasn't even a splurge. But this is a blessing. Every once in a blue moon, we get to have something amazing. And we do it while we can, while the food is still here. If you have any questions, always feel free to ask them in the comment section below. I am more than happy to answer them. just might take me a little while. But you can make this. You just have to believe in yourself. And have all the ingredients that you want to go into your mushrooms healthy and delicious i look forward to seeing you in my next video everyone stay safe and sound say keep your head on a swivel keep on stocking those pantries up i look forward to seeing you in my next video and may you each be blessed
take care everyone